water. Water is like essential for life. And you'll know from A-level biology, there's lots of properties of water that make it a little bit weird. And most importantly, it forms lots of hydrogen bonds. So why does it do that? Well, first of all, you've got the oxygen, which is basically going to be stealing a bit of the electrons from the hydrogen. So the hydrogen ends up slightly positive and the oxygen ends up slightly negative. So you end up with these little positives and negatives in a cross shape, which are like perfectly lined up to attach to each other in inverted commas. There's no physical bond there, but it's a little attraction between the positive and the negative, which means that that forms a hydrogen bond. Now, the relevance of the hydrogen bond has massive implications. There's actually a great OCR old spec question on like eight months tell me everything about the importance of water but going over some of those points first of all for transport it means that ionic substances will dissolve those little positives and little negatives can basically break apart any of those ionic bonds and that means that sodium chloride all those sorts of things are going to dissolve in water which helps them be moved around or transported around also for transport you've got the cohesion between water molecules so water molecules sticking to each other those hydrogen bonds between water molecules means that it coheres to one another which is super important in transpiration in the cohesion tension theory in the xylem you've also got adhesion so adhesion is like cohesion is water molecules sticking to each other like cooperation and getting on together adhesion is when it's sticking to something else so you might see in a test tube or a pipette or a, a burette if you're doing chemistry you might see the water sort of going up the sides and that's going to form the meniscus basically and that's adhesion so water sticking to other things so it has a huge role in transport because it takes so much energy to sort of break those hydrogen bonds you've got it takes a lot of energy to heat up water so it has a large latent heat of vaporization which means our internal core temperature changes slowly we can walk outside on a freezing cold day and we don't instantly turn to ice it takes a long time to turn the core temperature down also it has a high heat of vaporization so causing water to evaporate exactly the same physics behind it but you get extra marks for saying that um, it has a high specific heat capacity a large latent heat of vaporization other benefits of water are that it's going to freeze in a lake from the top down because ice is less dense and that's basically when it's freezing the water molecules are normally sliding past each other and they can slip past each other but when you start freezing it, it starts becoming solid then you start forming those the, the cross shape so those hydrogen bonds start getting sort of put into cement like structure so that they end up taking up more space than they do when they're allowed to slide past each other which means ice is less dense than water which means that lakes and rivers will freeze from the top down and then insulate the water underneath which means it can provide an aquatic environment throughout the winter in colder climates what else can we say in terms of temperature control sweating and evaporation that large latent heat of vaporization when the sweat evaporates from us it removes some of our core body temperature so these are some of the things that you need to be able to reference in your exam in order to be able to get full marks on things like water obviously for all the full details there will be links to some of the videos inside the course if you are one of our subscribers if you're not one of our subscribers then there's some free content in the free trial so there may be some stuff on water you can go check it out there if you do have any questions as always get in touch and let us know what you're thinking